Welcome to my review of the OON SDS6062 oscilloscope. The review sample was given to me by the guys at Salig.com, and right now it's selling for about 400 bucks. But obviously the price could have come down by the time you're watching this video. Throughout this review, I'm going to be making comparisons to the OON PDS5022 scope that I have, so you can decide for yourself whether the 6062 is worth the extra money. Okay, first impression. The screen is big and bright, and it has a wide viewing angle. The resolution is 800 by 600 and it looks very clear. But the next thing I noticed is that the menu buttons require a little too much force to activate, so it's easy to accidentally push the scope away when using the menus. Either that or the little rubber feet on the bottom need more traction. I got around this problem by putting a heavy battery behind the scope to hold it in place, and I really should not have to be doing this. On the plus side, the positioning knobs on the scope have a nice feature where you can just push them to recenter things in the middle of the screen. Next, let's look at the trace quality. Here's a 2 MHz sine wave coming from my function generator, and on the SDS it looks very clean and sharp. On the 5022, you still see the same waveform, but there's a slight aliasing effect. Here are the sampling and bandwidth specs for both oscilloscopes. There's a rule of thumb that you can take the bandwidth, divide it by 5, and that'll give you the maximum frequency of the fifth harmonic that you can accurately capture. So, in theory, the 6062 should be useful for measuring signals up to 12 MHz, with up to 41 samples per wave period. Now let's see what that extra bandwidth gets you in real life. Here I am measuring the gate drive waveforms on a switch mode power supply. On the 5022, it looks like a nice clean pulse width modulated square wave. On the 6062, the extra bandwidth and sampling rate means you get to see some more detail, like the ringing at the bottom. Now, you can't fix problems you can't see, and that's why the more bandwidth you can afford, the better. Another thing I liked on the 6062 is that you can change the number of samples used to create the composite waveform on screen. Right now I'm viewing the output noise on a switch mode power supply loaded up to 3 amps. On the 5022, it can be hard to get a stable view of the waveforms and the peak magnitude of the ripple. Another impressive thing about this scope is that it has a memory depth of 10 million samples, and that's really high. Take a look at some of the other scopes out there. Now one of the reasons why I recommend digital storage scopes to people is that they can automatically do measurements for you. The 6062 can do 8 automatic measurements at once, as opposed to the usual 4 measurements, and that's extremely useful to have when you're using both channels. Right now I'm measuring RMS voltage, peak-to-peak -peak voltage, maximum voltage, and frequency on both channels at the same time. The 6062 also has a few measurements that the 5022 doesn't have, such as rise time and overshoot, and I would expect that people working on high-frequency digital electronics would appreciate this. Now this brings me to the next topic, are these measurements accurate? I set up a precise 15-volt source for the oscilloscopes to measure. Something I've always noticed about my 5022 is that the measurements always seem to be off by about 0.1 or 0.2 volts. The 6062 seems to be much more accurate, giving me a reading of 15.03 volts. Now I want to see how accurate the frequency measurement is. Here's a wave coming out of my function generator, and the 6062 says it has a frequency of 1.138 MHz. Now I happen to own a highly accurate frequency counter, and it confirms that the measurement is accurate. The 5022 also does really well here and gives the exact same reading. Alright, now let's get into the little extra features that the 6062 has. You can use an external flash drive to save waveforms and images. It's pretty slow to use the on-screen keyboard, so I recommend just using the default file name and keeping notes. The FFT function allows you to view the frequency content of signals. Here I have my laptop generating a pure 1 kHz sine wave, but I'm seeing a few odd order harmonics, so it looks like the signal is not as pure as I thought. If I generate a similar sine wave with my function generator, it looks like it has even more distortion, and that's not surprising since it's really old. You also get to choose between different FFT algorithms which are useful in different situations. The FFT function is not a replacement for a real spectrum analyzer, but it's a nice little bonus to have. Next, my scope has a VGA output, and I can confirm that it works just fine. Some people might find this useful for remote viewing of signals. 
Another way you can remotely view signals is via USB using Owen software. Now, I found the software to be really basic, no interesting features beyond viewing the waveforms, and unfortunately it glitches out sometimes, so I wouldn't depend on this for anything critical. Finally, let's look at the pass-fail function, which is useful for manufacturers. This is really interesting because Agilent tries to make you pay hundreds of dollars to get this, but Owan includes it as a standard feature. So, let's say I've designed a DC power supply that's supposed to put out a certain voltage and only have a certain amount of noise on the output. I'm going to use this triangle wave as a simulated example for the noise. I can go into the settings of the mask and change the acceptable tolerances of the waveform. Then I can enable the pass-fail function, and the oscilloscope will alert me if the voltages go outside the specified range. So as you've probably figured out, I'm really impressed with the 6062. It's a scope that both beginners and professionals can use. The only thing that could possibly be better is if Owen used better switches and knobs on the front panel, and if they improve their software to be more stable or include some advanced data logging, analysis, and alert features. Other than that, you're getting a hell of a lot for $400. Also keep in mind that there are other models in the SDS series with even higher bandwidth. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know if you'd like me to review other stuff.